Hello, and welcome to another edition of The Daily Bolt with your host, Dr. Jeff Tilley. Today's topic, pictures of our distant future. Sit back and relax and enjoy today's Daily Bolt. So today's Daily Bolt comes to us from the field of astronomy. And astronomers not only look at what's going on in our solar system, but they have very powerful telescopes that can be trained to look at uh, various star systems, other bodies in the sky, other galaxies, very, very, very far away. And uh, there has been a very recent discovery out of a group of observers at the Very Large Telescope, which is located in the country of Chile in the Southern Hemisphere, of a large planet that is orbiting what's known as a white dwarf star. Now, a white dwarf is relatively late in the life cycle of most stars. Our current star, what we call the sun, is a medium-sized yellow star. There are many of them in the galaxy and the universe. There are also many stars that are in the next stage, which is called the red giant stage, in which uh, <clears throat> as the sun begins to expend its nuclear fuel, uh, it starts to expand, and the entire process by which that happens is the topic of another podcast. This was a rel- this is meant to be a relatively short discussion, but the red giants become much larger in diameter. The diameters expand uh, anywhere from 150 to 300 or 400 times the size that they are when they are in the relatively benign uh, yellow stage, such as our own sun. And after a star becomes a red giant, eventually a lot of that diameter collapses into a very concentrated inner core called a white dwarf, where the sun's material is much more tightly packed and it has a much higher temperature. So, uh, the observers, the researchers at the Very Large Telescope in Chile, have discovered uh, this white dwarf star system that lies about 2,000 light years away, meaning that light from that star system takes 2,000 years to reach us here at the Earth, traveling at about 300,000 kilometers per second. And it not only has this white dwarf star, but there is what appears to be a fairly large planet around it. This is the first evidence that astronomers have had that planets can survive the process of a star transitioning from uh, a a yellow medium-sized star to a red giant to a white dwarf. Uh, It had been uh, suspected and theorized that planets might be able to survive the process, but we didn't have a lot of direct evidence of this. And what's really cool about this particular uh, white dwarf system is that this large planet orbiting it is losing its atmosphere to the white dwarf itself, and the telescope can actually capture that process which is very, uh, <clears throat> very interesting. It means that the planet itself survived, but the white dwarf being very dense, being very small uh, in terms of its diameter, has a lot of mass and gravity packed into it. That gravity is actually pulling the atmosphere away from this large planet that apparently survived the entire process by which the star became a white dwarf in the first place. So, uh, what the uh, astronomers are seeing is basically a a tail that looks like a comet between the planet and the star itself. And uh, part of the process uh, is not just gravity, but there is also a lot of very high energy ultraviolet radiation, X-rays, gamma rays, Uh, coming out from the white dwarf that would be bombarding the atmosphere and also heating it up and uh, making it less dense, uh, helping the gravity to pull it away. Uh, This white dwarf would have a surface temperature about five times that of our own sun. 
Sorry there, we had a phone call interrupt us. Um, but the uh, temperature of this white dwarf is about five times that of our own sun. Our own sun has a surface temperature roughly about 6,000 degrees Kelvin. Uh, and the white dwarf uh, appears to have a temperature, and this can be determined by looking at uh, the spectral range of the light and energy that we're receiving from that star through the telescope, but it appears to have a temperature of about 30,000 degrees Kelvin, about five times as hot as the sun. This means it's going to be putting out a lot of ultraviolet radiation, it's going to be putting out x-rays, uh, it's going to be putting out gamma rays, and all of that energy is going to bombard the atmosphere and basically help to rip it apart in addition to the gravitational forces. So uh, the scientists are going to continue to study this system as time goes on uh, to try and learn more about what will happen in our own solar system when the sun reaches the end of its lifespan in about six billion years. Uh, what's believed is that our sun will expand out during the red giant phase to roughly uh, the orbit of Earth. So Mercury and Venus uh, will be entirely absorbed by the sun as it expands and probably our own planet as well. So by six billion years, we better be living somewhere else. Uh, but Mars, the asteroid belt, and the gas giants will probably still be uh, intact based on the evidence we're seeing here from this particular white dwarf system. And ultimately, the radiation coming out from the sun being five times as powerful as it is now uh, will have much more of an impact on the gas giants than it does right now. In fact, some of the uh, the atmospheres of uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are gases that have a relatively low uh, evaporation point uh, and will basically uh, evaporate away. So that's something to think about. So not only will we be gone but there probably won't be a planet, too many other planets with any atmospheres left in the solar system either. And so the solar system would be a white dwarf with some rocky planets and some remnants of an asteroid belt, though many of the asteroids may find themselves uh, with their orbits disrupted enough that they get uh, basically uh, chewed up by the white dwarf itself. Something to think about. Granted, I'm not going to be around in six billion years, at least I don't think I will be, and probably no one listening to this podcast will be, but sometimes it's interesting to think about where we are in terms of the life cycle of a solar system and the sun, and makes you think about our place in the universe, and sometimes that some of the things we think are important maybe aren't that big a deal. I'll leave it that for today. This is the Daily Bolt, Dr. Jeff Tilley. I hope you're having a good start to your holiday season. Good night, good afternoon, good morning, and God bless.